In A Civilizations, the great historian Felipe Fernandez Amisto writes that it is often said, and rightly, that societies are not organic beings and that it is misleading to draw analogies between the lives of communities and those of creatures. Yet in one respect, societies are like individual people. In both, vices and virtues mingle in the greatest saints and in the most politically correct common rooms. For every good intention there is a frail deed. Each provide the standard by which the other is measured. Civilizations compared with other types of society certainly have no monopoly of virtue. But a true pluralist has to relish the diversity they add to life. A genuine cultural relativist bound to respect every society's conception of itself is unable to condemn them. And what are some of the great diverse societies or civilizations that have evolved or developed in the seven big environments of the world? That is the question for today's Burning Archive. Okay, so today I am uh, extending my response to Isaac Rich's question about cradles of civilization following uh, the previous episode's discussion of the idea of civilization and how civilization is kind of represented in the game civilization and how, you know, there's some misleading concepts there, but also it introduces you to that sheer diversity and plurality and uh, astonishing variety and mix of good and bad that Fernandez Amesto talks about in that quotation at the start, start of the show. And I talked about the different concepts of civilization and how, you know, it's not really progress, but that... Uh, and it's not a, an achieved state so much as a process, and a process in particular in Fernandez Amesto's argument of adaptation of the environment. The itch to civilize, he says, is uh, an itch to accommodate the world uh, of nature to the needs of humans. In a sense, a garden is a perfect symbol of a civilization, and there have been many, many varieties of gardens in many, many cultures. So in this uh, episode, I'm going to sort of build out a little bit on the examples of civilizations in the seven broad environments that uh, Fernandez Amesto talks about and his demonstration of the sheer variety and some of the less lesser well-known civilizational achievements, so to speak, in those different environments. That civilization is not a stranger to any particular environment on planet Earth. It is not founded in the Fertile Crescent or in the ideas of Western civilization or indeed of Chinese civilization, but has taken many, many different forms. And the seven environments are, so he, he talks about the wastelands of desert, tundra and ice. And I'm going to look in particular at some of the stories of the Sami people in the ice and tundra of northern uh, Eurasia. Then there are leaves of grass, the uncultivable grasslands, not heavily irrigated grasslands, but uncultivable grasslands. And there I'm going to return to the Eurasian steppe which I did talk about a little bit in the first episode, and in particular the Scythian or Sarmatian cultures of the steppe. Then the third environment is tropical lowlands and post-glacial forests, what he describes as civilization under the rain. And here I'm going to look in particular at the tropical lowlands and the African civilization of Benin. Then uh, in part 
four, the fourth environment is the alluvial soils in drying climates. These are, in a sense, the traditional uh, cradles of civilization, the traditional uh, beginning point in many stories of civilization in the Southwest Asia, China, and India. And I'm going to recount Fernandez Amisto's own version of that story and how it is somewhat different and foreshadow uh, some broader discussion in the next episode and look in particular at Sumerian civilization often seen as the you know the original uh, the beginning of uh, civilization and writing and state societies and all that sort of thing fifth environment are the highlands and here I am going to look at the South American or Central American civilizations of the Aztecs and the Incas. Then we go to the seas and civilizations shaped by the sea, either on islands or on the shoreline or coastal, coastal civilizations. Rather like Australia, I guess. But here I will look at the great lost civilization of Sri Vijaya in, uh, I guess, what we would now know as Indonesia. Then finally, his last one is on the domestication of the oceans. How can you found a civilization on the ocean? And yet uh, what we have largely talked about in terms of Western First of all, let's talk about deserts, tundras, and ice. And uh, Felipe Fernandez Amesto begins his book in Civilizations with what would seem to be the ultimate contrast to the fertile crescent of that's the cradle of civilization, and that is the wastelands of deserts, tundra, and 